Hi. Hey, man. Pat, welcome to uh, my house. Thanks for visiting. Absolutely. Um, today, I think um, what we're doing is kind of a podcast. Uh, we're recording it with some cameras as well. Um, I have never had my own podcast. I've only been guests. So for the purposes of this, we can just call it your podcast. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know Pat and I, we have kind of a uh, will they, won't they relationship. Mm -hmm. And what I really wanted to do today was, uh, well, obviously just chat with you. Sure. We, yeah. um, we always have good talks. We have good talks. Um, you freelance too. I do. Right? How long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been freelancing in Chicago for almost 10 years now. Uh, right. I moved up there in 2008. So I've been doing it. Yeah. Almost 10 years. Yeah. That's wild. Um, and uh, I've only been doing it for about a year and a half. Um, so I will regularly pester you for um, for uh, freelance advice, even though we've been sure. doing video production um, for, for the same amount of time, really. Um, we went through uh, TV10 in hmm. college together. Yeah. We had our own television show. Uh, Which was lovely. It was. Um, Award-winning. Much to the chagrin of other people in our... Um, um, in our class that probably had better shows. Yeah. In um, our industry. In our industry, yeah. yeah. Um, ours was the most entertaining. Uh, I'll just go out and say it. Yeah. And it, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think that we single-handedly um, revolutionized television huh? about 10 years ago. But all jokes aside, uh, yeah, we've been doing this for the same for a long time. Uh, we've had some TV shows together, or a TV show together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we try to freelance together whenever we can. We went out to Seattle. We yes, did we a right gig in Indiana. We've been to, Ohio. Been to Michigan, Ohio. Michigan, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've hit a bunch of states up. Yes. Um, and, uh, and we've done stuff in Illinois together. So we've got kind of the Midwest covered and then the Northwestern seaboard. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oddly enough. So I didn't really have any topics today other than ch just chatting about freelancing. Sure. Yeah, let's um, jump right in. But uh, one of the things that I'm always curious about is, uh, and, and I did a recent YouTube video on this, is what to charge yeah. as a freelancer. Always hard. Um, you know, I know when both of us started out, we were just kind of like, yeah. what sounds good to my client? Peanuts, and, please. Yeah, yeah. And we would do, <laughs> we would do, and we would do free stuff constantly. Um, and then after like a year of doing free stuff, and you're like, well, I can't survive. Right. Um, and you start charging money. So how do you, how do you, Charge. How do you figure out what to charge for people? And well, do you have like a day yeah. rate or an hourly rate? How I mean, I try to stick it? to my day rate, um, but that always isn't feasible. People, uh, you know, projects differ greatly, uh, and you can try to learn as much as possible from that first initial phone call or email. Yeah. Um, you know, ask as many questions as possible. Uh, yeah. Ask what they're going to be using the video for who they're going to be showing it to, what, uh, you know, what is the purpose of it, how long it's going to be, how many people we're going to be talking to, like what kind of stuff would you like to be on the video, yeah. um, and pretty much just design a price around what's said. Yeah. Um, if you just do a base price, I, f I find that you sometimes get ripped off and sometimes rip people off. Yeah. Um, just because they don't really know what they want. Yeah. I'd say 90% of the time, people don't know what they want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, they're just like, hey, we want a video done. <laughs> I don't really know what <laughs> we want in it, <laughs> Yeah, but that's why they're calling you. So you kind of have to take the lead in that, and you need to direct them um, to the point that they don't get frustrated with you, yep. that they know what they're getting charged for, and uh, that all parties are pretty much happy. Yeah, and I think that the biggest... Uh, I don't want to call it a takeaway. The biggest thing there that I hear is like managing expectations mm -hmm. too. Um, I mean, obviously you want to charge a good price for it, but it's, you know, if you go into a project and you're like, Hey, yeah, I can work within your $500 budget. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I wish you had 10 times that, but if you have that much money, we can work within that budget. Um, yeah. And then they're expecting like time lapses and like all sorts of gimbal shots or drone footage um, you know, in, in two days of shooting, you're obviously, you're just going to blow through your budget right. and then you're not going to, you're going to, as a freelancer, you're going to be making pennies yeah. per hour when it comes down to it. And, um, and then the other thing too is, you know, I don't want to get $5,000 for a project and then give them a $500 project where I'm just going to like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're spending that money wisely or utilizing those resources. Um, and it, it comes down to, um, for me, I think managing those expectations from the client, so knowing, so they know exactly what they're getting, 
when you go on. And, and I, I really like the um, asking questions a lot. So like that first time you get someone to, to contact you yeah. and you're like, great, what do you want? Um, right. That was always a rookie mistake yeah. when I was first starting off is that I wouldn't ask any questions. I would think that they knew what they wanted and I was coming in to capture it. Yeah. Um, so I'd show up and they'd be like, all right, what do we do? And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> sh-. um, and, and like, yeah, I mean, you for any freelancers that are starting off, you're going to run into just terrible things. Clients. Oh, yeah. Terrible clients, but also Bad things that are that are your fault and yeah. that you totally. But the best part about making those mistakes is you're going to go through it and you're never going to do it again. Yeah. Um, so each time that you screw up, uh, you get way better. Yes. Um, and I think listening to us say that, you're going to be like, eh, hey, I'm not going to screw up. You're, you're going to screw up. You are um, going to forget your batteries at some point. Yep. Every gonna, single one of you, you're going to forget I, a I think SD I, card. I think I forgot my camera one time. Yes. And I had to tell them that. And I was like, yeah. oh, what? Like This that, client is never going to hire me. Yeah, anymore. exactly. And uh, I th- but that's the best part about freelance, too, yeah. is on to the next one. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's not like end-all, be-all if a client... Uh, doesn't rehire you. Yes, it's always nice to get repeat clients, but um, but that's you, you have you move tons on. of clients too. So right. like, or you know, hopefully you have lots of clients. So right. one upset client is not going to make or break yes. your career. You uh, in that way. In freelancing, I like to think of it this way: that you have like thirty clients, give or take, yeah. that make up a full time job. Yeah. So if you get fired from one thirtieth of that, yeah. it's like, oh, all right. Yeah. Well, I just need to figure out. Wh- and I mean, it's always growing too. Yeah. The more you freelance, the more you do well. The more you shoot with people, and the more they tell people about you. Yeah. It just it grows like a bubble. Yeah. And it, I mean. Yeah, it's like an upside down pyramid scheme where like one person tells yeah four exactly. people, even if one of those people hires you or contacts you. Almost like a tree. Yeah. A tree instead of a, better, a it's a tree instead a of a pyramid. Yeah. Instead of a. It's, it's organic a, growth. Yeah. Um, I don't way. know why I referenced it to um, like a pyramid scheme. Yeah. But, uh, well, you're just a crook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true. That's very true. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, that's, you know, I, I share a lot of your sentiments. So, I, you know, I typically charge um, a day rate or a half day rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, then I've got that broken down into an hourly rate. So if a client comes to me and they just want like an hour of footage from an event. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense for me to charge them my half day rate sure. to, to go to show for an hour and do it. Right. I mean granted but I don't want to be do, I don't want to be doing that a hundred times a year because right. you have to keep in you have to keep in mind that if you're booking a day for an hour, yes. then I that day is completely else. booked and if somebody comes along and wants to pay you your full day rate, yeah. then you have to go back and tell that client yeah. no because you didn't book me for you know X a substantial amount of, amount of time. Yeah. So I've had to deal with that also, where you have to follow the money because that's yeah. we don't have salaries coming in. We have to piece it together. Yes. So yeah. it money money is yeah I the mean, thing that business uh, owners. I mean, you yeah, have you to have make, to make a profit doing it. Right, and so you also have to juggle um, multiple clients and let them know that. Yeah. Like, yes, you can book me for an hour. I'll be there for an hour, but you have to let them know that if somebody comes along that has has the day rate stuff, then you're going to be... And and they can lock you in by doing that half day rate. Like, I never... If somebody books me for a half day, that's concrete. Yeah. If somebody comes along for a full day and my half day is booked, it's too bad. I'm doing the half day rate. Yeah. But if somebody only wants to pay me for an hour, then I will definitely bump them. And I'll let them know that if I get something, I have to bump you. Just because... Yeah, it's money, and yeah, oh, yeah. That, I mean, this industry—it's tough to make money in, and it's tough to keep keep yourself afloat. So yeah, I actually saw a, a neat YouTube video recently where this guy was was talking about how his rate structure is—he's got his day rate, mm-hmm. and his minimum rate is a quarter of that day rate. So like, if you want him to show up for anything, yeah. you're paying him. I think for for the purposes of that example, it was like a thousand dollars. Yeah. So two hundred fifty bucks to get him out of bed and show up with gear. Sure. And then on top of that, he broke it down by you know, in 10 hour or, um, like a 10 hour day increment. So like every, his hourly rate was a little bit less, but you know, if he only showed up for two hours, he still made his money worth, right. which, I, which I think is great. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, it, it's I to looked, each their own yeah, really. Oh yeah. Like if you can figure out a good strategy that works for you, then stick to it. Yeah. But, absolutely. um, I mean, I'm sure there are people listening that are like, Oh no, I don't do it that way. Yeah. I, that's fine. I mean, yeah. this is just how I've been doing it for 10 years. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I'm sure I'm, 
either missing out on money or making too much at some point. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, but that's just how I've been going and it's been going well. So yeah, that's good. Freelancing rates for everyone are going to be different. Yeah. Um, and it's the, probably the biggest question or the most frequent question that I get asked is about rates and how to, tra- how to figure out what you're going to charge. Yeah. And it's just different for everyone. Um, and, and I, uh, I think, yeah, uh, the people that are actually still listening right now are either probably my mom or like my mom, yeah, your yeah. mom, Judy and Eleanor. Yeah. Uh, or people that are actually trying to get some information out of this. Yeah. Like, um, and I, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tough topic to discuss. I hate this side of the business. Like yes. I wish I had somebody to negotiate for me. Yeah. Um, I hate that money has to be a part of it, but it absolutely does. I mean, gear is skyrocket prices oh, yeah. I, <laughs> for mediocre stuff. You're paying, you know, $1, 10 grand, dollars, yeah. uh, for the top of the like, People don't realize how expensive cameras are yeah. if you're not in the production world. Yeah. Like, go and look at some of the top-notch lenses. They're, like, 50 grand yeah, for, yeah. For, like for a... Single lens. Yes, for yeah. a single lens that's, like, a fixed length. Um, it, it's just insane. And I, I get why it's like that. Um, and I understand that production... You have to build your, your equipment yeah. up yep. so you slowly get better and slowly get better. Uh, but people that expect like Hollywood type movies, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. to be produced in like a day, yeah. that are it, it's tough to deal with those kinds of clients, mm-hmm. and they're, you're going to run into those. But I mean, just show them, show yeah. them how much stuff costs, yeah. and they'll start to understand. Like, okay, yeah. they're doing a pretty good job with uh, the with budget that they're charging me. Yeah. So maybe another topic we could talk about that I think that you would probably have some good insight on would be um, how do you find clients that is another thing that I get for from other freelancers Um, and I even struggle with it too I mean the markets changed you know you it's it's rare that you can just drop in um, you know cold calling yeah I've never done that I've been lucky Um, I've I've done like the anti uh, put myself out there approach (laughs) yeah like (laughs) like hope that people don't call and hope (laughs) Um, I have never spent a dime on advertising. Um, I have never cold called or gone into businesses, you know, to try to promote. Um, I did start off by doing free and really low budget stuff. Yeah. Um, and that turned into a few clients. Um, I answer Craigslist ads to begin. I'm trying to get away from that just because there, it seems like a little bit less of a budget. When and it it's like for every hundred that you email, you might mm-hmm. get like one. Yeah, um, I, I just have f- a I have a script yeah. that I copy and paste. I, yeah. Sorry. So if it, yeah. it's just like cast an efficient yeah. line out there, yeah. you know, if you cast fifteen lines out, then one of them, one of them, them will bite. bite. Um, yeah. I do the same thing. Sorry if you've ever heard it from me on Craigslist because it's the yeah, just, it's just generic. It. But I mean, that's that's it, that's to be expected not, from Craigslist. It's not worth anything. It's not worth more of your time. But frankly. It, it's it's weird because it kind of is because I have some big clients right now yeah. that I did meet on Craigslist for that first time and yes. they just wanted a small video yeah. and then they knew that you did video and then when they come into like a much bigger event yeah. or something yeah. they're like oh let me give that call that guy a call back yeah. and then it turns into something so I wouldn't I wouldn't put Craigslist down because Craigslist really I think is the starting point for people who yeah. don't know how, how to, to do clients. a video yeah, yeah. Um, like it's the, don't... it's the starting point Point for people who don't know oh, how yeah. to do a video, yep. and for people the, that don't know for, how to get the clients. Yeah, for clients and so it's answers. a great meeting place. Yeah, for those two. I will say I did land my first international client that you helped me out with. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to even say them. I think we signed a non-disclosure agreement. Okay, so yeah, just I'll just bleep out that name. And, okay. In post, but well, um, you can just say my first international yeah. client um, through Craigslist, and yeah, I mean, it, I um, I have a couple of alerts set up. Um, trade secret of mine I guess so I if I'm sitting here at home if someone is like if someone posts an ad that says I need a videographer or video done or commercial work and there's several keywords that I use and it'll send me an email and I just click on that get the email address that you send to it which is like you know Craigslist dot Mm -hmm. whatever yeah and then I've got and I've got a big radius so I've got these alerts set up in all towns within like a two-hour driving radius or something and and then, yeah, I just copy and paste that script. There's right. a little bit of information I input to make it more personal so it's not just 
hey, hire me. Yeah. It's, you know, hey, I'd love to hear more about your yeah. one actual, your dance recital project or your, um, you know, your Instagram video project or whatever. Right. And then I just send that off. That's and another thing that I have. Uh, I've, I've fished before uh, where I will send out, I wonder what my competition is. Yep. So yes. I put out a Craigslist <laughs> post yeah. that says, hey, I want something that I would be, like the kind of ad that I would 100% respond to. Yes. I yeah. put out that ad to see what kind of responses I get. Yeah. Oh, man, there are a lot of people that are just like, I'll do it. Yeah. And then they put their number. Yeah. So I'm like steps above those people. Yeah. Like you got to include why, like a yeah. little bit about yourself. Yep. You got to, you have to include examples. Oh, yeah. Um, I have like 15 links I think yeah. I send plus my I don't even, portfolio page. So I mean, right. there's like... Right there, you have like 30 samples of my work. Right, exactly. Um, that you see. But, I mean, I would say one out of five or one out of six probably yeah. had examples. And, yeah, that's pretty small. And most people were just cutting straight to it. I think you need to go a little bit more in depth because I do have a pretty good hit rate with yeah. Craigslist stuff. Yeah. And I think they, you know, they see that. So yeah. if you want to improve that, I would I would put your put yeah. more information in the email. Yeah. But have that template that you can just copy Custom. and paste. And you can customize so, it a little bit. Yeah. There. And I think that's a good... It's a good way to do um, kind of like A-B testing where you can say, you know, every once in a while I will include a list of clients I've worked for before. Mm -hmm. And it's usually just name dropping. Yeah. So it's like, hey, we used to work for Google and MapQuest and I've done stuff for HTTV and whatever. And uh, um, and I'll see that. And and I don't notice any difference there. Yeah. Um, but it's a good way to kind of do some testing on it and see, sure. you know, maybe... Yeah, you don't you want know. to scare people away, too, no. if they're like, oh, oh man. Yeah, they've worked for... Yeah, he's worked for Request CBS or, and yeah. NBC. Yeah. And, like, why would he want to help us out with this video? Yeah. But, it, I mean, most freelancers have skimmed the yeah. the, the top of, yeah. you know, what people would think is the ladder. But yeah. it's just, there are so many projects out there that... Yeah, I mean, every company needs video. Right. I mean, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I like that it's that you said it's a good starting point for um, freelancers and for sure for marketing professionals that are looking for videos. Yeah, um, there's a lot of other websites out there too. Yeah, um, that, I that like, can help. Yeah, like Mandy.com, I think. Um, yeah. Some of them, Production Hub used to do free ones. I think you have to pay for it now. Yeah, you have to buy credits yeah. for Production Hub. Um, there's a few I used to, to. I, I used to do the yearly subscription to Staff Me Up. Yep. Have you ever used Staff Me Up? I have not. I've heard of it though. Um, I didn't like it. Just because, but I might not have been using it right. Sure. Um, so I, I paid the yearly subscription one time, mm -hmm. and I think I only got like two jobs from it. Okay, yeah. And they were like terrible reality show <laughs> type stuff. <laughs> Typical reality show stuff. Yeah, so I mean, I was just carrying my camera around filming like a guy going up to people and like making really awkward conversation yeah. and then them trying to make like a sizzle reel out of it. <laughs> and so I, I just kind of left because I didn't like the responses I was getting yeah. or the just, just how little of responses Yeah, and I was paying for it. So yeah, I don't, you gotta, I don't have to pay in that regard for, for jobs. Yeah. Um, um, I get, I get that it's a, it's a hard like for those companies, it's like, do we charge the person that's looking for the video or yeah. do we charge the people that yeah. are going to try to be applying for the video? Yeah. They have to be making money some way. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're providing some sort of service. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, my, my way of finding clients is I just go to like every event in my hometown mm -hmm. and I just, for lack of a better term, like whore myself out. So like if, uh, if I'm chatting with someone, they're probably going to ask a little bit about me and I can tell them I do video production, but I make sure that everyone in town that I know that I talk to that mm -hmm. has any say in the communication field, marketing field, maybe runs or owns their own business, um, or is just well connected. They knew that I do video production. So if someone goes, Oh, we need a video for our upcoming fundraiser, they go, yeah, kind yeah. of that. Um, and, uh, so I do, I do that. I will, I will kind of, it's not a cold call or a cold email, but, um, I have found a fairly okay success rate with contacting um, uh, companies, local companies on Facebook. And I've got... Oh, a, yeah, I've never a, even thought about that. Kind of a template um, that I have. But what I'll do is, you know, because I, I try to shop local as much as I can, um, when, you know, here in, in Bloomington Normal. So I can actually go in and say, hey, you know, um, you and I, we actually had our dogs were in the same... Scent class together. Scent class. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Um, oh, where the connections are made. Yeah. yeah so I'm like, hey, you know, I saw that you guys have been doing some really good stuff on social media lately. Uh -huh. I don't know if you remember me, but we had we were in the same scent class together. Um, 
you know, how's your pup doing? Like, and then, you know, we might Bam. chat a little bit of it. And then, um, and I've, I've actually got a meeting with a client this next week, a potential client, um, because of that. But yeah. normally I'll be like, Hey, I was just, I was just in your, um, you know, your bakery getting some baked goods. Um, I was just, so I popped online, noticed that you didn't have any videos or you don't have a lot of social media. If you're interested in it, mm-hmm. then here you go. Um, I've done the same thing through Instagram. Um, I actually landed a really good client, um, uh, a really big project actually, probably my biggest of the year through in, an Instagram message that I just sent someone because they, this company, this landscaping company had been doing really good videos um, on their uh, Instagram page. And I was just like, hey, you know, love this work. If you guys are ever interested in chatting or, you know, freeing up some of your time and, um, you know, letting someone that's like a professional do it, um, let me know. Like, I would love to, to work with you guys. And, and I think the, the biggest part is making sure that you're offering them something. You know, you're not just like, hey, hire me to do video production. Right. You want to phrase it, at least for me, like, hey, let's, you know, you're running your business. Why don't you let someone that does video do video? Right. And it's less than hiring a full-time marketing person. Yeah. And that, I've, I've toyed can, with that idea of taking from that, um, going to a, like, monthly subscription fee i've thought about that sure. like me being their full-time or me oh, yeah. doing their videos yep. at like a one-fifth of a normal employee price yep. and then yep. just piecing if you have, like 10 companies together yeah, that would pay decent money doing yeah that. um i've thought about it but i've never pitched the idea to any of the clients yeah. so i have pitched it to this client um i've yet to hear back on it mm-hmm. but i was uh, same thing i was like you know if i do that for um you know I, I don't want all of my income to come from day rate or half day rate video production. Mm-hmm. It's great, but um, I want to diversify as much as possible. And so I've got, you know, I, I will charge hourly sometimes. I'll charge half day rates, full day rates. Sometimes I'll just charge per project just because I know I'm like, uh, this project is going to be a real pain in my butt. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to just give me $2,500 for it and I'll do it. Um, and I just kind of make sure that I'm like, well, I know that's worth my time. I know it's worth the like pain in the butt client fee or if it's going to be pretty easy yeah. I'll charge certain things and I was like you know what I don't have any retainer systems up right now so I, I pitched it to them they're still thinking about it um, but I th- I think that's a great way to, to consider because then you have a monthly income and, and mm-hmm. then you know depending on how much they pay you could even be like hey you get first dibs on all my right we get, like a tier get, system yeah you get you know two days a month full of video production for this or you get you know maybe two videos a month or something like that right. um, so I think it's a neat way to, to consider it um but yeah, I haven't, uh, I, you know, I've actually literally walked into businesses before and been like handing people my card. Oh, yeah. And that's, oh, that's never, good. I've never gotten a single yeah. email. Maybe they looked I think, at my website or something. I, yeah, I don't, I don't, people just don't like to be bothered. I like, think that's the thing, yeah. They don't, they don't want to be called about something yeah. unless they want it done. Yeah. Uh, they don't want people, I don't think I've ever clicked on an email blast. I mean, no. it. it has to work Somewhere. for some people, yeah. but yeah. I just don't ever do that. And I think... 95% of the people out there yeah. are the same way. Like even if they want video done yeah. and you come in and you're like, Hey, I'll do it. Yeah. There's this weird stigma behind it that they you, you will like, be like, eh, I don't really like that. He did that. Yeah. I'll we're go like to a creepy else. salesman. You know, yeah. Almost. You're, you're, you're pushing something yeah. that they, you didn't know that they wanted. Yeah. Uh, It'd be so, like if someone came to your house and wants to sell you. XYZ. Right. You're, you're just automatically turned off. So yeah. I've never done the cold, any type of business yeah. stuff. Um, had people just come to me, I I think that works. I mean, it works but, for someone somewhere, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, as I said, I've had very little luck with just going in. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think networking is the biggest thing, and, and making sure that you know if someone thinks of video production in your area, they either think of you or you have a good enough reputation with current clients mm-hmm. that that client passes your name along. Right. Um, and and uh, that's by far the best way to do it. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Just people coming to you and Saying. getting from a, from a great yeah. referral. Yeah. They're like, Oh yeah, they've spoke highly of you. Yeah. you I mean, you're in like yeah. you, you've already got that job. So yeah, that's, um, yeah. And it's probably 75% of my work is repeat mm-hmm. either repeat clients or referrals. Um, I mean, very little of my work is, is new in most ways. Um, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. I had asked Twitter if they had any questions. Ooh. Um, I'm not on Twitter. I need to be on Twitter. Oh, man. Um, uh, one of my buddies, Chris Taylor, runs my Twitter, Twitter account, yeah. and I don't know what he's putting on there. So um, I don't know. I don't, I don't <laughs> see a lot of stuff from you. I see a lot of stuff from him. I see a lot of stuff from Chris, though. Okay. Um, your choice of being a business entity, um, 
you know, are you an LLC or are you like a sole proprietor? No, I do. Just, I like do a, everything through my name. Sure. I'm a 1099. Um, I get screwed employee. at tax time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, I, but I mean, I, I write off business expenses still. I, I, I should get the LLC. It's really cheap. It's only like 250 in Illinois right now. Yeah, they lower the prices. Yeah, like, right it's like I, I, I submitted mine like two years ago or a year and a half ago, and then the like like two days later in mm-hmm. 2017, they're like, oh, we dropped the prices down. Yeah, great. And I, <laughs> I might do that in the coming uh, months here, just sure. because I have this gig, this big gig yep. to, on the horizon uh, that I might be getting. Um, so I might be hiring more people to help me out. Yep. You know, like editors on the side yep. to handle the workflow. So that it would make sense to get the LLC then. Uh, but right now, I mean, the last 10 years, I've gone s- yeah. straight just through my name. Yeah. So and I think as long as you're doing, if you're, as long as you're like checking the boxes that make sure that you are like doing stuff legitimately, yeah. I think that that's probably a fine way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, um, I am under an LLC. Um, it's actually uh, Jordan, my wife and I, um, for those of you listening who don't know who Jordan is. And uh, we're just like a, a partnership LLC because um, she helps me with like script writing and production mm-hmm. managing and stuff like that sometimes. And. Um, and I wanted the same thing. I wanted there to be kind of some blanket coverage for um, when I hire production assistants right. or, you know, need to get an assistant editor um, down the road. And, yeah, I mean, I, really, you can go as long as you need to without it and then kind of um, figure it out from there. Uh, and I don't think there's a right answer for that because I know some guys in town that do it, and they are a S-corp, I think. I think yeah. it's a, similar to an LLC. I don't – frankly, I'm, I don't know. I'm so – Legally, is that – Not business. business yeah. Like, legal – yeah. Stat, I, don't, I, yeah. I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to like the business side yeah. of stuff. I'm just yeah. like, here's my money. <laughs> take it. Take IRS. Take whatever. Take your 40%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's uh, and that's also a kind of a daunting thing to look at uh, when you're uh, when you're getting into freelance. So um, another question here from um, some of our overseas friends Ooh. from uh, um, the UK, um, Rob and Rich from the Film Look. Uh, they asked, "What is the weirdest thing?" you filmed hmm i uh i'm gonna you see the medical was, stuff at least i know yeah that. oh that's right i, I yeah i would you tried I, to show me like an open heart transplant i couldn't i, I did I um i did <laughs> plastic surgery yes. uh, oh, yeah, yeah. videos so yeah. i think the weirdest thing that i saw was like a rhinoplasty Ooh. or no 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 facelift, facelift. oh <laughs> um facelifts are i never actually knew what they do but they like cut around your face yeah like with scissors yeah like just scissors yeah just <laughs> like, they pulled them out of their drawer yeah, in the kitchen exactly they wipe um, the spaghetti sauce off pretty much and, and then they just stretch your face Ugh. to get like the wrinkles out and Ugh. then they sew it back up yeah. and i'm just like oh my gosh we're little rag dolls well, just just live with your wrinkles um, they're cute you know that was Ugh. that was weird. Yeah. Oh, thanks for reminding me. I totally forgot that I, I did figured those you would. I figured you would have something. What were you? What I was, your was answer going to what say. Was your no, be? I was going to say I turned down or I I was somebody had sent me a. It might have been you. I think somebody oh, sent me a, a wedding uh, request sure. that was like film our wedding day, but also film our wedding night. Oh my! Yeah, <laughs> and we, I was call, like, we call that the honeymoon package. Yeah, an extra and, five grand, and I was and like, I get a, you know, keep all the footage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where'd he go? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Ugh, no, that's I, weird. I, I think I, I might have. I mulled it over, and I, I was like, yeah, no, I think. I would yeah. do it. I think yeah. so. If anybody's listening out there and wants the wedding day and wedding night, the honeymoon package, package from Pat. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, but other than that, that is kind of an odd request. I've I had a lot of cool stuff, but weird is, I mean, weird could be yeah. anything. What's the coolest thing you filmed then? The helicopter tour through the um, Canadian Rockies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had the you. camera underneath, uh, yeah. and we were just flying. We flew from Vancouver all the way up to Calgary. No, no, Edmonton. Yeah, okay. But we went through like Banff and like yeah. the just oh gorgeous like every I we woke yeah. up at like five in the morning each day and I was yeah. like yes yeah. it was like it's I was super excited. Ever woken up oh yeah, by like four hours. <laughs> but I like couldn't sleep because it was yeah. so much fun. It was three days of just being in a helicopter, like looking at this gorgeous landscapes yeah. and uh, um, uh, the the cost per day to take that like same yeah. helicopter trip mm-hmm. was like ten grand a day, and I was getting paid. 
Oh, that's so right, yeah. that's when I was like, I'm in the right field yeah. because this is unbelievable. Yeah, I think seeing some amazing things like that is is one of the the my favorite parts of this industry. Is, oh, yeah. is that I get you know I have a natural curiosity for a lot of stuff and I, I love traveling and you travel extensively more than I do, but I just get a, I get to experience so many different things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I get to learn a lot of weird stuff that I never have any interest in. I never had any interest in knowing. You know, when I film like a, a periodontal training series and sure. I learn all about gums and yeah. gum disease and all this other stuff and I'm like well oh, that's really cool I actually didn't know that much about right it's like know, dental hygiene in that way you remember the, I don't ever brush my teeth you remember the show The Pretender yes where yeah. like they, they just became a different profession yeah. each day yeah. to like to, to yeah. get into the mind of that person yeah. or, I don't, that, that might not even be the plot line of it yeah. but I remember it was kind of like <laughs> that um, but that's kind of what we do like yeah. we join businesses for a day or a week or yeah. a month and we like are an employee of that company. So yeah. I've really learned about a lot of different yeah. types of, you know, ways people go out and spend their day. It's, yeah. it's really cool. Oh, yeah. um, I agree. Bringing it full circle, that was what our TV show was about in college. Oh, yeah, that's right. Was we joined a different uh, registered student organization yeah, every was, week or whatever. Yeah, um, women's rugby. Women's rugby was good. <laughs> uh, dodgeball club. Yeah. Um, Skydiving, we went, we gamify circus. Gamify circus, that was a good one. Uh, oh, the Icebirds, Redbird. Oh, the Rockies. Red Man, I think I like shredded my knee during that one. Yeah, you were goalie. Good. Yes, I was. I, I remember was, you played I was goalie. A that really was really bad goalie. <laughs> Other than just taking up space in front of the net, I don't yeah. think I have the skills to. Be that was goalie. a fun episode. I remember yeah. spending the week with them. They were cool. We did. Um, uh, what else did we do? The polar plunge. Oh that yeah. That was cold. And then our camera person. Forgot the battery, <laughs> or they forgot to hit record. Rachel Ruda. I remember so Rachel. We got out. We got in the cold water. Jumped back out, and we were like, "How was the footage?" And she was like, "Oh, I forgot to hit record. Do it again." You're gonna have to go one more time yeah. into the cold water. Yeah. I missed it. Yeah. The weirdest thing that I ever did was um, some uh, a client of mine in town. Uh, they do business training videos, and we had to do a training video on proper bathroom etiquette, which was like so we filmed in a bathroom about how to like not fart and how to wash your hands loud and all this other stuff. I don't Pull your think, butt cheeks apart yeah, so it doesn't sound yeah. like it. <laughs> um, just don't ever poop, um, I think was the name of it. But that was probably the, the weirdest one. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't coolest one, you know, getting to travel in our previous job, mm-hmm. uh, or our first job out of college with immersive media and see so much of the of the United States and do um, 360 degree like immersive tours. The like zebra, virtual. the zebra sticking its head into our yes. car. Yeah, and there was signs that was like, "Do not feed the yeah. zebras; they will no. bite your what, fingers whatever off." Whatever you do, don't feed the zebras. <laughs> and then one of them stuck its head in our car um, to try to get the food. And uh, yeah, I think you can hear our screams on camera. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool. That was, uh, that was probably the neatest one. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Cool. I don't have any other uh, questions for you. I don't think the internet did either. Okay. Um, this has been great, man. Yeah, I it really has. Like... I, I kind of want to keep talking about stuff, but I realize we got to get going. So yeah. this is probably uh, a long episode. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. Right. Yeah. If uh, anyone watching or listening has any uh, questions for Patrick or I, um, let me know. Let us know. And uh, I will. you can check out Pat and me. All over the internet. Uh, I'll put a bunch of links. I'll include a bunch of links wherever you're listening to or or. Uh, I was in a uh, I was in a bowling parody uh, video. Oh, we're done with the episode. We're done. With the episode. <laughs> um, that's right. You were was it a frozen one? The frozen yeah, one. That was good because the guy that was supposed to be in it didn't show up. Yes. Uh, so I had to be the male person. Yes. And it it's awkward. It's yeah. terrible. I have been on. But it's camera. got like eighty thousand views, that's which good. is really sad. Um, and I'll go watch it this afternoon. Actually. Ugh. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I do remember watching that. I've had to be in a lot of videos too, just randomly, because someone's like, "Well, we need a background extra," and you're like, oh, "Okay, great." Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll link all of this stuff uh, either below or in the uh, description wherever you're listening or, or consuming this media. Uh, Pat, thank you. Yeah, for absolutely, man. And uh, this is great. It's man. always a pleasure uh, talking with my boy Adam. Yep. Uh, anytime you want to have me back, I'll be down in a second. I will absolutely do that. Okay. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening and watching. Cool. Maybe we'll call it uh, the Always the Bridesmaid podcast since I've never... The, the leader of these things. Rookie mistake. Stupid. I hate that. All right, good. I hate the blinking light.
Oh. Uh, take two? Take two. All right. You're right. I'm going to spray you so uh, hard. She really knows the cameras are rolling, huh? Dude, she, it's miserable. That's insane. 